In the last episode, we talked about how we could create a database in PHP. And in this episode, I want to talk about how we could create tables inside our database. To give you a reminder, one table stores one type of data. So a table about users holds information only about users. And a table about posts only hold information about posts. Right now, I'm only talking about two tables, but you could have as many as you want. In PHP My Admin, there are two ways how you could create a table. And the first one is the simple way, is by simply clicking on creating table. And the hard way is creating the query ourself. I actually want to show you both ways. So I will create the users table in the easy way first, then I will delete it and we will create it the hard way as well. So you know how both ways work. So let's start with our users table, which will be the easy way. And let's go to our PHP tutorial database. We need to fill in a name that we want to give our table. And in my case, I want to call it users. We also need to specify the number of columns that we want. And let's change four to three. Click on go. Now we got redirected to a new screen where we need to create our columns. So first off, let's start with the names. Every user has a unique ID. So the first column will be ID. A user that wants to log in has a username. So the second one is username. And every user has a password. So let's create a password. Let's call it password. So let's go back to the ID again, because we need to specify the type. And right now it's integer and you can see well, there are a lot of types that you can use, but we want to work with numbers because we want to increase our integer ID every single time a user creates an account. We can keep the length empty. The default is equal to none. And we don't need coalition and attributes, but we actually do need the index. So let's see the options. It can be primary, unique, index, full text, or spatial. And like I said, an ID is unique and it needs to be our primary key. So let's click on it, click go. And AI stands for auto increment. Well, we actually want that every time a row gets inserted into our table, the ID needs to increase automatically by one. So let's click on it and that's it. We don't need the other types. For the username and password, the values are characters and not integers. So let's replace integer with var char. And char is a fixed length string data type. So any remaining space in the field is padded with blanks. And in the column next to it, which is the length, we need to specify the amount of characters. For now, let's say 255. And let's do the same thing for password, 255. And password is a far char as well. So right now we're done. So let's click on save. And you can see the table that we actually just created. We created the column with the names ID, username, and password. And you can see that ID has a key in front of it, which stands for the primary key. And you can see that the type of our ID is an integer. And the username and password is a far char. And you can see that ID has something extra, which is auto increment, because we want to increase it every time by one. So now that we have created our table in the easy way, I want to focus on the hard way, because I don't think that what we just did is good practice for beginners. So what I want to do is to go to SQL, click on it, and I want to create a new query. So what I want to say is that I want to drop table, and we need to specify the name. So let's say users. Be aware that you need to be in the database PHP tutorials before you click on SQL. Otherwise, it will not know where the table users actually is. So if you try to drop table users in, well, let's say PHP my admin, it probably doesn't exist. So the query won't work. So let's click on go. And localhost says, do you actually want to execute drop table users? Click on OK. And MySQL returned an empty result set. And that's actually good. 
So now let's click on SQL or SQL. It really doesn't matter how you call it. Let's remove the query that's already generated for us. And let's create our table in the hard way. The way you create a table is by writing down create space table. And then you need to specify the name. And in our case, it's users again. Follow it by a set of parentheses and a semicolon. And to make it more readable for ourselves, let's go inside our parentheses and hit double enter. Let's go one line above, hit tab. And what we want to do now is to create our columns. And column one will have the name of ID. So let's type ID, hit a space. And after the space, we need to specify the data type. And in our case, it's an integer. Follow it with a set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we need to say how many numbers the ID can have. So let's say 11. Let's go outside our parentheses again, hit a space. And we need to write down not null, which basically means that this column cannot be empty because our ID cannot be empty. Otherwise, we cannot check for, well, anything. So let's hit another space. And now we need to say that this is the primary key of our table. And this needs to be in capitalized letters. So let's write down primary space key. And remember that we said that we want to auto increment it every time a new user is created. So let's hit another space and let's write auto increment in capital letters. Well, it's auto underscore increment. And we need to end it with a comma because, well, on the next line, we want to create our username. And if you don't have a username or whatever after your ID, you don't need to use your comma. So right now, we want to write down username. The data type is equal to varchar, and we want to have it 255 characters. And our username cannot be empty as well, so we need to write down not no comma. And we don't need to specify primary key or auto increment because it's not necessary for the username because it's user input. After your comma, hit enter. And let's write down password space. Data type is varchar and it has 255 characters. And this is also not null. And we don't need to end it with a comma because this is the last column that we need. So let's click on go. And my SQL returned an empty result set. So let's click on users. And you can see that our table is created with an ID, username, and password. So now that we have created our table and our columns, we can insert data inside of it. And you need to make sure that you're in your users table again. And you need to click on the insert button at the top. Let's click on it. So let's give it a name of Dari06 and a password of 123456. And let's do the same thing for the username. And let's say Dari07 and the password is 123456. And remember, we don't need to input our ID because we set our ID to auto increment. Well, you actually can specify a new ID, but we don't need it. So let me show you what I mean. Click on go. And you can see that the values are null and null. But if we go back to our users table, you can see that our IDs are created. I actually created two before to test it out. So therefore my ID is equal to three and four. Well, let me edit it actually. Set it equal to one. And let's change four to two. Let's go. And now my table must look like yours. So by now, you must know how to create a database, how you could create a table, and how you can insert information inside your table. This was it for this episode. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.